Hello everyone, Silver Contrail here. Today, I'm going to be showing off my Feed the Beast Infinity World, my base. Uh, this is a continuation of a Let's Play series that I had, and I think I'm going to continue this as a Let's Play series from this sort of video onward. Uh, so, lots of things have happened in this world since I stopped playing, which is really cool that I've been able to actually get things done for once, which is some, not something I do a whole lot. Usually, I end up getting too distracted and basically quitting, but yeah, I, <laughs> I've made a lot of progress. This is probably one of my most developed worlds so far, and it's very quickly becoming more and more developed. So let me show off some of the stuff I've done, kind of explain some of the processes that I've done, and show off cool things that I've made, because that should be fun. Okay, so uh, I'm starting out here. This was close, to, actually spawn was that way, pretty far um, away from here. It was somewhere over here, I think. And yeah, pretty far away. Uh, it's a it's a decent world. Um, originally, I was attracted to this biome right here, the orchard. I really like orchard biomes. I always try to live by them because I think they look really cool, uh, which you can see right over here. And then this mountain, which ended up being where I put my base, was sort of in this mountain range. Uh, you can see right up there, just barely, there is an AE2 meteor kind of hanging out, and that also drew me over to that area. We'll go over there in a second. Uh, this is the ender quarry that I'm using. This <laughs> this little friend here is my lifeblood. I just made it pretty recently, and I just got some uh, ender markers. So should be able to set that up a little bit easier, obviously using tesseracts. Doing a lot of thermal expansion this time around. I didn't think I was going to, but I ended up going back to it. Um, and yes, yeah, a simply jetpack. Only the base tier so far. I don't have anything else better. But we'll go up here, and then we will hang glider around. Which, this is seriously the best combo for transportation in the game, as far as I'm concerned. It's so good. And if you want to go faster, you just hold shift. We and this is basically my base. Uh, it's a it's a cozy area. There's lots of farms out here. Um, there's obviously the orchard biome, and then there's this redwood forest. I think these are redwoods, anyways. Let me go check real quick. Yep, they're redwoods. Okay, so biomes are plenty. Obviously, being on. Uh, so the base itself is kind of set up in a bit of a U shape. So there's this entrance here, the front, which is basically the front entrance. And then there's this, which I'm going to make into kind of a side entrance. Originally, my plan was to do a bunch of stuff with the railcraft. So let me get settled down somewhere. This was going to be like this side entrance on the right. This is going to be where trains would arrive and leave as sort of like a train station. And they would get sent out to different parts of the world. But I kind of got away from railcraft. <laughs> just kind of went back to tesseracts because I'm I'm lazy and I didn't know a lot about railcraft and the more I learned about railcraft the less excited I was for it because a lot of the stuff in railcraft is a little tiresome it's a little too balanced I think um, in a in a bad way like things take too long machines take too long to operate okay so started off with basically a little wheat farm and it became a much larger wheat farm. Let me see if these guys are getting power. They are getting power. Uh, these are all uh, crops that have been genetically modified through agricraft so that they grow really really fast and they yield a lot more than usual. Uh, and then I have over on this side a no longer functioning tree farm and a no longer functioning sugarcane farm. Uh, the only thing I need is the are, are the wheat, so that's what I basically collect. Uh, and that's all wired down here. Uh, you can see that the wheat's going in all different directions because it's screwed up. And I have a lot of leftover wheat in here. <laughs> uh, and then a lot of the stuff down here has been disconnected and I need to go through here and clean this up. At some point, I'm sure I will. But for now, it's kind of stuck like this. Uh, the original power source that I was using were reactant dynamos, which we'll talk about in a little bit. And I ended up getting away from them. I decided that I didn't want to run reactant dynamos, so I went to steam boilers and some other forms of power. So let's go in the main entrance. Okay. 
uh, garage doors, carpenters garage doors. I love these things. Of course, you can make them whatever texture you want. The entire base is pretty much built out of the quarried blocks from Railcraft. I really like them. They look really sweet. Uh, and then, yeah, this is the base proper. Basically, a lot of the stuff that was here has been in the is in the process of moving around, and the stuff that's still here is again in the process of moving around. Uh, some of the stuff is kind of thrown around wherever, but hey, it's home. Uh, so on the right side here, we have a problem. Actually, I got some light pouring in, don't I? Is that coming from the top or what? I'm not sure what's going on here. These are uh, obviously the essence berry bushes and they can only grow at certain light levels so it's important to make sure that you put blocks in the way so that they don't get any light towards them but I think they are right now. I think they're getting some light. It sure looks like they're pretty well lit. I'll have to check on it later. Uh, and then I just have like a bunch of different uh, better barrels up here with some different things, especially more quarried blocks, stone, uh, almost a full set for the um, spruce wood, I think. Yep, spruce wood. Uh, and then these are the frostbound blocks, which I really like to pair with the white, so it's some white and blue. And I think it looks really nice. Oh, don't want that. I got that one. So I tend to use it. Um, I tend to use the two together, so it's it's the quarried stone and then the frostbound. The frostbound is made with ice, so uh, glacial precipitator from thermal expansion is the source for most of those. And then some cobblestone, some other various things. Uh, this pig, which keeps opening up my garage doors. There we go. And this is sort of the machining shop, which is uh, very, very messy. So everything, everything you see here is what I'm using 90% of the time. It's my thermal expansion machines. I've got you know my pulverizer. Uh, I've got an Ender IO uh, alloy smelter, um, a magma crucible, fluid transposer, induction smelter. Those basic machines that you need, and then an AE system here, which has a fair amount of stuff. Oh, I see. I only get the small terminal. Okay. Okay. So this has you know, a fair amount of stuff in it. I'm working on trying to get everything from the ender quarry to get ported into here and just deleted, especially cobblestone, diorite, a granite, things I know I'm never going to need, and I don't want them to get clogged in the system and fill up my uh, storage cells too quickly. Uh, obviously, I have made this into a crafting terminal. I really like the crafting terminals. I try not to use the regular terminals because these things are just the best and then a tesseract that is linking all of my stuff. This is getting items, receiving the items from the ender quarry, and it's receiving energy from my energy production. Now, although you may see a reactor over here, I have not really used this ever. In fact, the only thing I really use it for is for this energetic infuser, and once this is dried up, and I probably even before then, I'm gonna move this whole thing and just get rid of it because I kind of made a point not to use big reactors until I want to wait till I'm way in the late game, then I'll probably put one together. But I don't want to use them now because I think they're overpowered. And yeah, they're, they're just overpowered. Um, away from that is, is material energy, or excuse me, not material energy, but applied energistics. I think is underpowered in some cases or ex excessively overbalanced that I think it's it's too tedious to use. Let me get some uh, torches. Um, there are certain things that take a little too long, I think. Uh, some experiments with some other power sources. I tried culinary generators, didn't really work. I tried these solar panels from solar expansion, they didn't really work. Uh, they're a little too slow, a little bit too resource intensive. And uh, the fermenter, which was part of that whole uh, reactant dynamo setup, so what you'd do is you'd produce the bio the biomass here using water and either fertilizer or compost and then some sort of plant matter that would get sent to the uh, reactant dynamo along with sugar and then that would burn and that's that was basically my power setup. 
Uh, I've got one enchantment table over here. I've got some cows that I use. Oh, that's terrible. Oh, my gosh. I'm trying to get a decent sword, but I keep getting junk. Deleted. Uh, there's a fair amount of stuff in here. I've got I've got a fair amount of materials. There's a lot actually in, in just dust form in here <laughs> that I still need to smelt. And otherwise I've got coke oven, uh, blast furnace for the steel. One of the things I found that's really nice is that the coke ovens don't work if they're full of creosote oil. So what I do is I just output it directly into a trash can for fluids and it just drains it all. Um, otherwise you can just make a tank and then dump it in there. So down here, these are the elevator tracks for Railcraft. This is a, kind of a holdover from when I was going to really use Railcraft to get around. Uh, they work as ladders, so that's kind of nice. Okay, so down here, this is where all the power comes through. And all the wiring, and remember those wheat we saw earlier? Well, they're down here too, and they get stored in here. Oh yeah, there's water here. Um, so this is the uh, the mess um, that needs to be sorted out. So the, the wheat comes in here and it gets stored in one of these barrels. I used to store saplings and sugar cane here as well. I don't do that anymore. And instead, the only thing that gets outputted here is the dirt, which I have to manually input. So if I have some dirt, I just manually put it in there. And then the wheat, and the wheat gets pulled out and it gets put into the cyclic assembler along with the dirt. Um, the dirt from one side... Can I get over here? No, I can't. Oh man, this is such a mess. Uh, and, and I'm going to be digging out a new room to put all this stuff in and have it set up so that I can expand it easier. So the dirt comes out and it enters the uh, cyclic assembler and what this does is it just produces compost and the compost goes in here. And this gets pulled out uh, and then used with the wheat to produce biomass along with water. And the biomass, as you can see, gets pumped out and it gets dumped into this Railcraft steel tank. The steel tank that stores all of the biomass outputs that into a uh, Billcraft factory refinery, which turns uh, the, the uh, biomass into biofuel. And the biofuel gets pumped into the steam boiler as ethanol Actually, no, it just turns into ethanol. That's what it's called. It's not biofuel. It's ethanol, and then that combines with water uh, to burn and produce steam. The steam gets pumped out of the top into two Mine Factory reloaded steam turbines. These guys are producing uh, quite a bit of power, and then that power goes right into this energy cell, which is applied to the Tesseract, and this is where uh, all of the power gets sent out. So this goes to the upstairs ME system as well as the ender quarry. All right, so we can move on and talk about this. This is some experiments with immersive engineering. These things output actually a lot of power and they are very inexpensive to make. Uh, you just need basically a solid supply of copper and basically any form of wood and then a coke oven and you have this and it's very easy to wire, hook up. Uh, what I did find, if you're having problems hooking these things up, what I found is that it's very important which direction you're placing them down. So what you want to do is place the kinetic dynamo like in front of you, like so. So you place the kinetic dynamo, and then you'll place each of the wheels, one, two, three, in front of you like that. And it's very important you stand that way, otherwise it won't work. And then this goes here. These things have to be put in the right direction. And then these guys only output on one side, I'm pretty sure. Uh, but... I don't know how much I'm going to try to expand this. I'm not really sure exactly how much energy I'm getting from it. I feel like these are, con are doing more. I think one of these is the equivalent of all three of those in terms of redstone flux output. Now the downside of course is that this is pretty much lag free as far as I can tell and it's infinite and I don't need any extra energy for it to happen. This setup requires more energy so I'm, I'm losing some of that energy. Uh, over here, I have a system set up to farm ender pearls. Looks like I'm out of essence, though. I am out of essence. So what I do when I'm out of essence, I use a diamond dolly to pull this guy up. So I just turn off the lights, basically. Oh boy! Whoop! Ow! 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 And then the grinder kind of does its thing. Yeah, 
and that will send the mob essence back to here. And the mob essence is used to spawn the Ender, Ender Mini from Ender IO, I think. I think they're from Ender IO. He's gonna get killed too. Come on. There we go. And that's gonna stock me up with some Ender Pearls, which is exactly what I wanna do. Okay. That is pretty much it. Oh yes, so these are the kind of the leftover reacted dynamos. So again, you put the let's see if there's one. Let's okay, none of them have it. Uh, the biomass and then sugar, and then it will output from there. Um, one interesting factoid about these is that they only ever output energy if they have something in this slot. So it kind of got annoying. the The sugarcane farm wasn't really working very well, and I figured out that. Really, at the end of the day, I need fewer materials and fewer setups for processing to just do steam boilers. So I'm probably going to do that for a while. Focus on running steam boilers and steam turbines. Um, because they're kind of cool too. <laughs> so I want to make some bigger ones and, and beef up my production. We'll see what happens with that. And that is... This, is, this tunnel goes back to my farms as well. Uh, that is pretty much uh, the extent of the world so very short world tour but nonetheless something to get started with how did you get in there yeah, I'm, I'm building the walls up of this place still I'm gonna try to finish it up pretty soon and we'll see what it looks like so let me know if you guys want to see this as a let's play series of course would be very willing to record it I've been doing a lot of stuff on it lately and it's been a lot of fun. I think there's some cool stuff you can do in the future with this. I'm trying to get to some kind of end game stuff that's going to be really fun and set up some really big power production in the future. Or maybe some kind of tutorial series. I'm not sure. Up for any suggestions. So until then, thank you guys for watching. And until next time then.